wondering what to do in Bogota in one day, I'm Aleja, I'm a local host here from Bogota, Colombia. And today I'm going to share with you... <laughs> <laughs> What to do in Bogota in one day? I'm Aleja, I'm a local host here from Bogota, Colombia, and today we're going to share with you the perfect itinerary to enjoy all the must of our city in one day. And we're going to start right there in my pack in Monserrate, the top of our mountains. So, are you ready for this day tour of the best of Bogota? Let's go! We made it here to Monserrate. Now it's 7.30 in the morning. We like to arrive pretty early because this way we can avoid the line. So this is going to be your tip number one. When you come to Monserrate, try to arrive here maybe between seven is actually a really good hour or eight. Passing 9 a.m. is going to get really, really crowded. Now, another tip important for you to make the most of your time in our city if you have the chance to come to Monserrate between a Monday and a Friday, we really encourage you to do that because Saturdays and Sundays tend to be pretty, pretty crowded. Also, uh, try to notice if you have a holiday here in Colombia because on holidays also we're going to have a lot of lines here in Monserrate. So those are two really important tips for you to enjoy your time here in Monserrate. Now, as you can see, the sun is hitting pretty, pretty badly. And here, because of the altitude of Bogota, we already mentioned we're really high, we're the number four highest capital city in the world, the sun hits pretty bad, even though if it's cloudy. So always, always try to use sunblock. Now, this is going to be a bonus uh, tip for you. This one is a bonus tip for you. This one is when you come down to Monserrate. Mm -hmm. When you exit Monserrate, you're going to notice a lot of taxis here on the entrance. Try to avoid those taxis because usually they charge more. We encourage you to use maybe one of our apps. You can use Uber or Cabify. We already made a video talking about that. Or if you are going to Candelaria, like we are going to do today in this perfect day in Bogota, it's better to do walking if you don't have a car range. So here you have it, guys your tips to enjoy Monserrate. So we came up the mountain using the funicular, the little train. And here, just at the exit of the funicular station, you are going to find this gate. So here, this is going to be the entrance of the bird watching uh, path that we have here in Monserrate. So what happened is that here in Colombia, we are going to have a bunch of different species of birds. And even from here, from Bogota, you're going to be able to see them, to watch them. And Monserrate is going to be one of the perfect spots to do that without leaving the city. So here you have the entrance of the path. Today we're not going to do it because we have to arrive earlier than we did, even though we arrived at 7.30 here in Monserrate. For this one, maybe six is going to be a good hour. We are now on the wishbound. And here, I'm going to throw in my coin. Some people said that for the wish to come through, it has to be thrown by your back and it has to pass on that ring. So let's see if I can make it. Inside, but I think that not on the ring. <laughs> we'll see if it comes through. Let's see, I will tell you. One of the viewpoints from Monserrate to the city of Bogotá. You can see the city is just right back us, and you can feel it. Bogotá is a monster of a city. It's a huge city. We're going to be 10 million inhabitants nowadays. I'm talking about January 2024, <laughs> the moment where we're coming here to Monserrate, and not even from here, from Monserrate, which is one of the most famous panoramic views of the city. You're able to see the end of the city, not even from the south. Or through the south, sorry, or to the north. So it's a huge, it's a huge, it's a massive city. And here you can enjoy this beautiful landscape. We say Bogota 
has three protectors. Monserrate is the first, the Virgin on my back is the second, and the third one is a cross that is located more to the south of the city. People come here mostly because of their belief, their Catholic belief. This is a place of pilgrimage, and on my back there is a church. That's where we come for mass. This church is very famous because inside of it we have a statue of Jesus, it's called the Fallen Jesus. And people come to ask him for favors, especially related to health. Um, it's something we've done for hundreds of years here in Bogotá, come here to ask him for special favors. And now the mass is going. So you can listen to it. One of the things also they do in Montserrat, because it's a pilgrimage place, is that they have speakers all around Montserrat. So whenever there is mass or there is some sort of praying going inside of the church, everyone will listen and participate with it. Uh, on it, sorry. Um, and there you have it. If you are Catholic, if you believe in those in those things, you can come here and ask the fallen Jesus for a miracle, especially if it's related to hell. Oh, and one more thing: if the miracle is complete, if it's fulfilled, then you have to hike up Montserrat uh, as a thank you and come to mass. And we're going to show you the two things that you have to visit here in Monserrate. So the one thing that you need to spot is going to be the statue of the fallen Jesus of Monserrate. As Juan it mentioned, we believe that it's a miracle Jesus. So it's a Jesus that is really, really special for us. And the second one is going to be a statue of a virgin. Actually, it's a replica of one of the oldest virgin in the world, which is going to be the Virgin of Monserrat, the protector of Catalonia in Spain. we're going to have the aisle of souvenirs and you're going to have to find a bunch of different things from magnets to bracelets maybe some ponchos maybe a mochila which is a bag different things even coffee and coca tea also as we said before we love coca tea we drink it on daily basis and it really helps with the altitude sickness so this is where we like to stop for coca, coca tea again because they serve it with the pure leaves and some lemon and uh, honey which makes it sweeter and more more tasty Aleja is having something similar but not similar she's having coca cola which is a beer made out of the coca plant one thing that you are going to find in these stores is that they have different products made out of the coca plant that are done by the native communities, the indigenous communities. So you can come and try different things. So here, surrounded by this beautiful nature, we're going to have one of Bogotá's classics, which is this one. A cho hot chocolate with cheese and an arepa. We already explained hot chocolate in another video, so if you want to see more about our food, our gastronomy, we encourage you to go and visit it. But let me do a short explanation. So our hot chocolate is going to be pretty aromatic. We mix anise and we mix cinnamon on it. And we also put cheese on the inside. You can see the cheese that we put is pretty fresh, so it's not going to melt. So what we do is that we cut the whole cheese and when we have everything we are, we are going to take our arepa or our bread it can also come in with bread and what we do usually it's pretty fresh so you can see it's scrambling arepa usually doesn't do that so we put it like this heading towards the Botero Museum, we are in a block that we know as the cultural block or Manzana Cultural and that's because we are surrounded by both um, museums and by the library Biblioteca Luis Angel Arango, it's a public library and it's very important for us Bogotanians. To my back you can see that yellow building that's the Candelaria Church, that's the church that gives a name to the entire neighborhood and it's also one of the colonial churches inside of the neighborhood. Now we're going to go to our next stop, the Botero Misión. Let's go. 
We are now inside of the Botero Museum and as you can see it's a beautiful house with this gorgeous patio. It's so beautiful and so quiet that a lot of people decide to come to read here. Now this museum, uh, things you should know before you come to this museum is that the, it's open every day except for Tuesdays and the last entrance is at 4 p.m. And most importantly it's completely for free and that's thanks to Botero himself. He donated all the pieces of art gathered in this museum and demanded that art would be accessible for everyone and that meant having this museum for free. Now talking about Botero, he is very special for us Colombians especially because he managed to create a unique style that was easy to identify and that made him very famous around the world. Plus he uh, touched different topics that are re relevant for us as Colombians. Now let's go and check it out. Now, one of the things that uh, Juani didn't mention is that over here, Botero is going to donate totally 123 pieces of art made by him. And he's also going to donate 85 pieces of art of international artists, even Monet, Picasso, several also. So guys, we just exit from the Botero Museum. Now we're going to the Bolivar Square, which is the main square not only of Bogota, but also of Colombia. Here on the sides, we're going to see several restaurants, also different art stores, even a library. So you're going to see all of that. now in the Bolivar Square. The Bolivar Square is going to be the main square of our city and also of our country. It is located in the central point of La Candelaria, in the heart of La Candelaria. Bolivar Square is going to be the heart of our city. And over here we have the most important buildings of our city. So I'm going to go one by one. You see, this building that we have here on this side, on my right, is going to be our Justice Palace or the Supreme Court of Colombia. Then in the corner, we're going to have a colonial white house. Inside of that colonial white house, we, Colombia, have our scream of independence from the Spanish, which is going to happen in 1810. So also important, nowadays is a museum. Now, in my back, we have a huge church. That church is going to be the main church of our country. Colombians, we tend to be pretty Catholic and pretty traditional. So here, churches, are really really special for us. This is the main one, this is called Catedral Primada. Then on the corner of the church we have another building. That one is going to be a school and actually is the first school ever established by the Spanish back in 1604. It still works as a school today. Here on my left we have this other beautiful building. This is going to be the Congress of our country. And last one but not Less important, we have here the City Hall of Bota, is this building right here, also called Palacio del Libano. So here in Bogota we said Bolivar Square and Candelaria has more stories than pigeons. We have several things to explore in this neighborhood. If you want to know more about La Candelaria, the main landmarks that we have here, our hidden gems, favorite hidden gems as local hosts in the city, we recommend you visit our video uh, exploring La Candelaria Bogota with locals. You will have all the tips to visit La Candelaria and of course if you want us to visit to take you on this tour, we will be more than happy to do so. Now with Aleja we're doing what we know as the 7th street. This is something we Bogotanians usually do and we are doing it to reach the uh, Gold Museum. It's very, this street is very lively, it's very active, there is a lot of commerce, so let's enjoy! And also it's pedestrian. <laughs> so, ah yes, it's just it's for nice. pedestrians, so it's very nice. <laughs> so guess guys, we stopped with Juani to buy one of her favorite things, empanadas. So cheers guys! There is a place called an Emparadaso, really recommend it, it's really good. <laughs> now we are 
at my favorite museum here in Bogota is going to be the Gold Museum. This museum is located in front of a square called Santander Square. It's just in front of the 7th Street, you are going to find it, it's pretty easy to find. Now, for you to know, before you come to the Gold Museum, this is space open from Tuesday to uh, Sundays. During the days of the week, it's going to open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And on Sundays, it's going to open from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., just for you to know. Now, this is my favorite museum for several things. I'm going to tell you a little bit more here inside of the museum, but just for you to have an idea, over here we are going to find the, one of the biggest uh, collections of pre-Hispanic pieces in the world. In total, we're going to have 34,000 pieces entirely made by gold and 25,000 pieces made by other materials like clay. So, let's take a look. So, this museum is special for us Colombians, not because of the material, not because it's the museum of gold. Well, of course that is important, but the most important thing is that in this place we celebrate our indigenous heritage. That is the main thing about the Gold Museum. Now, I want to make you an open invitation when you come, and now that you're watching the, the video, I want for you to kind of erase on your mind that what you're looking at is going to be gold, the economical value. Because for our indigenous communities, this material was not important because of the economy. It was important because of the spiritual value that it had. When you come here, I want you to change your state of mind and try to watch this museum that way. We are really close to the Gold Museum. What I want to share with you is one of like the, the secrets here in Candelaria. The uh, gemstone of Colombia is going to be the emerald. And Candelaria is also known because it's part of the Emerald District, or the Emerald District is better inside of Candelaria. Now, we have here a particular square, which is called the Rosario Square. In this square, you are going to see the informal market of Emerald. So we have a bunch of uh, guys standing here on the corner, uh, just trading Emerald to one another, or trying to, to sell Emerald to people here on the streets. My recommendation, if you want to buy an emerald, don't buy it over there because you don't know if it's like a real emerald or not or the quality of the, of the emerald. My recommendation for you will be to go to a place that is right here, it's called uh, the Emerald Center. Today we share with you the most iconic places in the city center, but remember Bogota has so much more to explore. As you saw in Monserrate, it's a very vast city. And of course, we will love to show you around. We have over 15 different tours inside and from Bogota. And we just uh, wish we can show you our city and share with you insightful information, locals perspective, and a lot of fun, of course. If you like what you saw, leave it in the comments we want to know your opinion and follow us for our next video hit the bell and the subscribe button see you on the next one